To learn more about earning college credits with Study Hall courses, visit GoStudyHall.com or click the link in the description. When you press up on a D-pad, the Tetris block hard drops. You put in your alarm time and your phone plays some peaceful birds chirping at 7 a.m. When you run your first program, it says, hello world. This simple kind of communication is what makes programs useful. You could design an incredible program that solves all of the world's problems. But if it doesn't output the solution, then it doesn't really do much for us. We want our programs to be useful, so we need to know how to take all of that hard work and turn it into a beautiful output. And the first step on that journey is mastering the basics. Text. I'm Sabrina Cruz, and this is Study Hall, code and programming for beginners. Output is a fairly broad topic, since it's kind of just any effect a program can produce. But one of the most fundamental types of output is text. You write a program to find some kind of answer to a problem, and then it tells you that answer. You see this all of the time, like a calculator that takes your inputs, then outputs the answer, or an alert that your favorite YouTuber, me, uploaded a new video. You find text output everywhere, and that's why it's the type of output that we're focusing on in this episode. It's the most basic way to make your program useful, but getting the computer to give you that text output the exact way you want it isn't always a simple task. One of the easiest ways to display text output is to use a print statement, which is a line of code that tells the computer to output a certain bit of text to the user. That can be anything from a simple confirmation message to a fully formatted analytical data report. To create a print statement in Java, we type system.out dot print followed by parentheses. Inside these parentheses, we can put whatever text we want to display in quotation marks and then end the entire statement with a semicolon like we always do in Java. So with just one line of code, I can make the computer say anything I want. For example, let's say we want to display the text activate goblin mode. To do this, we set up our print statement, put that text in the parentheses, and the computer will print it out to the user. That's fairly simple. We give the computer the text and it gives it back to us. In fact, the stuff we put in quotations is literal data, because it's going to be the same every time we run the print statement. Literally. But we often don't want the computer to just output the same thing every time. A lot of the time, we're creating a program to solve a problem. And if we already had all of the answers, we wouldn't need computers. Fortunately, we can use this same type of print statement to output different things by using variables. A variable is a piece of data that we name and whose value we can change throughout the program. Those changes often happen behind the scenes. So if we want to display the current value of a variable, we can include the variable in our print statement without any quotes. And when we wish to display both literal data and variables, we can put them in a single print statement separated by plus symbols. That's super useful since, as we're crafting the output for our programs, there might be things that we always want to stay the same. But most programs also output variables. And you'll see print statements that mix literal data and variables in most major programming languages, albeit with different syntax. Let's see this in practice with Andrea, a manager at a small chain of health food stores. She reviewed the inventory counts for her store over the past two months and noticed a consistent trend of food waste. When the food doesn't get sold, they have to throw it out. And at first glance, it seems like they're throwing away a lot of food. She decided to write a program that keeps track of the food they've thrown out so she can monitor the issue and hopefully find a solution. But as great as this program is, it's no use until she crafts the output. First off, she wants to display the amount of waste per day by product type. So she'll need three different variables since the data she's using might change depending on the time period that she's looking at. A double for the waste cost, since it will be a number with a decimal, and then strings for the date and product type, since those will be strings of letters. For the sake of keeping things simple, we'll imagine that we already have those variables assigned and have calculated their values. We just want to work on the output. Now, we don't want to output a bunch of data without context, so we'll also need some literal data that turns each print statement into more of a sentence to make sense of everything. Then we can put all of these things together in a single print statement. And just a side note, the literal data may need spaces at the beginning or end to make sure that there's a space before and after the variable when the message prints. Otherwise, your sentence would run together without any spaces. Now, Andrea's program lets her input a date and product type into fields in a window and outputs how much waste was produced that day below. But she really wants to look at multiple product types at once so she can compare and contrast where the biggest problems lie. And this requires a more complicated print statement. Before, the output that we wanted to display was only 
one sentence long. If we add in more print statements, though, they would print out directly after the previous thing we printed, which can look disorganized. So if we want to break up multiple print statements, we'll have to tell the computer when to start a new line, which is pretty simple. Enter the print line statement. Those two extra letters make a big difference on the formatting of our output and help keep things much more organized. Adding the LN basically acts like the Enter key on your keyboard. Any output that comes after a print line statement will be displayed on the next line. This lets Andrea adjust her code so that even though the only input is a date, the output is the food waste cost for each food category instead of just one. And to make it more readable and easy to compare, she wants each food category to show up on their own line. So when she makes print statements for every category, she uses print line instead of the standard print statement. And when she runs the code, they all come out on different lines. Now Andrea can easily compare the waste cost on any given day, and she sees that they're wasting a disproportionate amount of produce, which is super useful to know. Now she can adjust the amounts that the store orders. While print line makes a great start for making sure our output is easy to read, that's not the only formatting tool we've got. We can find a lot of these tools by using printf, where the f on the end stands for formatted. Just like when you use print line, all you have to do is add f to the end of your standard print statements. With printf, we can do a ton of stuff, way more than we can see in a single video. But it all follows the same basic structure. Printf statements look a lot like regular print statements, but they're broken into two parts. First, there's the format string, where we build the print statement like before. Only this time, we have these little percent symbols in place of the things that we want to format. Then, the second part is the pieces we want to format, called the arguments. Those are placed at the end of the argument list, separated by commas. They will fill in each placeholder of the format string in order when the program runs. We can think of these placeholder strings inside of the format string like mini variables. Each one has a specific meaning. Each percent symbol is paired with a letter called a format specifier, and the letter tells us the data type that's going to be formatted in that spot in the print statement. Making sure we're using the right format specifier is important since different data types have different formatting tools that we can use. For example, percent %f is a format specifier for a double, and percent %s is a format specifier for a string. Before we add any fancy formatting, let's look at our first example again, but using printf to get the hang of it. Instead of breaking up the statement with pluses, we can put the entire format string in a single set of quotations and replace the variables with the format specifiers. Then after the quotes, we can list out the variables in the order we use them, separated by commas. That should give us the same output as our first print statement, but now the code is a bit neater and easier to adjust later on. However, the real power of printf comes from the format specifiers. We can modify them to format the output in different ways. Like we said before, there's a lot of different things we can do here. We'll leave a link to a bigger list of the different tools down below. But a big one is changing the precision of a piece of data, which lets you adjust how many decimal places get printed. For example, with Andrea, she looks at a few days of her data and notices that it varies quite a bit. To look for larger trends, she adds a section to her program that will return the average waste for each product type for a given month. But when she first runs the program, the average turns out to be a long decimal, and anything less than a penny isn't really meaningful. Meaningful. So she turns to printf. We can easily adapt the printf statement we made before with a few tweaks for this new problem. To change the precision of the double, we make a small tweak to the format specifier. We can insert a point 0.2 between the percent sign and the f, which tells Java that we only want to see two decimal places. And we've done it! That long decimal has been reduced to a more intuitive dollar amount. And like we said, precision isn't the only thing we can do with printf. We can change the spacing, add line breaks, and more. We could keep going on refining finding our print statements and the different ways we can format them. But the key takeaway is that output is an essential part of any code. Creating a program that doesn't produce any output would be like writing a book without anyone being able to read it. That's why we need to pay close attention to how we display our output, making sure that it's clear and meaningful for the user. But let's not forget that what we output can be just as important as how we output it. Take Andrea's food waste program. Is it enough to simply show the average cost of waste? Is that data actually meaningful? Maybe she should consider a different kind of statistical analysis. Maybe her product type should be more specific. Everyone's buying fresh tomatoes to make a lasagna, but avocados are rotting on the shelves. So she should consider what data gives her the ability to take meaningful action. Otherwise, her program isn't actually useful, 
even if it can output. Output isn't just an afterthought that comes at the end of a program. It's an integral part of the design process. By being intentional about what we output and how we do it, we can make our programs more useful and impactful. Output isn't just about displaying the result at the end. It's about making sure that your program tells the full story from start to finish. If you're enjoying Study Hall Code and Programming for Beginners and are interested in taking an online course and earning college credit, check out gostudyhall.com or click on the button to learn more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.